So ev everybody's seen the green chemistry principles over and over, and of course there's the one that gets right to the heart of what we're talking about, designing for energy efficiency. So the idea that the chemist has some responsibility to recognize the impacts that arise from their choices of the chemicals and chemical processes. So things like, um, this is a little bit focusing on the manufacturing step, but um, this could also apply to raw materials and how you, uh, you know, disassemble or recycle product. If you're doing things at room temperature, room pressure, you're kind of giving yourself a step in the right direction. If something has to be done under vacuum, under uh, really high pressure, really high temperature, then you're, uh, you've got a challenge cut out for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, there, I mean, there have been pressures on uh, energy resources for many, many years. Um, you know, at, at times, society has been sort of more in agreement about the, the best way to, to deal with it, but um, the reasons why we're concerned about it have to do with all these other impacts. They're all inextricably linked to each other, so the energy choices lead to uh, CO2 emissions. I think pretty much everybody agrees, uh, even if they disagree on the timeline of when uh, fossil resources are going to be depleted, I, I think it's pretty unambiguous that they, they are being depleted at a, a rate faster than we can replenish them. Uh, the, the toxicity issues, so a lot of fuels that we, or, or crude uh, energy materials that we extract from the earth are not in pure form, and we're bringing up nitrogen, sulfur, along with the carbon. This uh, gets introduced to ecosystems where, that are not used to dealing with it. I'm going to spend a lot of the later part of the lecture talking about the energy water connections because these are really easy to quantify and uh, they, they really are kind of linked in a feedback cycle that the more energy you use, the more water you use, and vice versa, the more water you use, it takes more energy to produce uh, the water. Uh, and then there are the waste issues as well. So. Um, some of the obvious ones being nuclear waste, have to deal with the, the waste materials that are generated. And then there's also issues of just wasted energy. So we, I think we saw some of these charts in the very beginning of the class, but I think it would be useful to revisit them. So despite all the uh, efforts to focus on energy conservation, the trend is very clearly in the opposite direction. We saw a lot of hockey stick curves at the beginning of class, and that kind of drives the, the increase in energy. So we're here somewhere between uh, these two bars, but uh, we're pretty uh, inextricably on this upward curve right now. So there's this constant demand for more and more energy. So if we look at the energy sources, yeah, of course we see the, the same trend broadly. Uh, where we get energy from, there, there's liquids, so uh, essentially petroleum fractions. Coal, it's always been one of the big ones. Natural gas, uh, renewables, and then nuclear power. This data is from 2008. Um, of course, a lot of things have happened since 2008. We had a pretty big recession that, uh, I, I looked up some more recent numbers and basically that just kind of flatlined a little bit for a couple years and then resumed the upward curve. So if you can just imagine this stretched out by two or three years. And then the other thing is that, of course, with the um, the rise in natural gas production in the U.S. that um, the natural gas and some of the liquids have bumped up a little bit and coal has gone down just a little bit, but for the most part these trends have held pretty well to predictions. So just keep an eye on these numbers, uh, quadrillions of BTUs, because we'll, that will be important on some of the later slides. Okay, this is a very, uh, there's a lot of information in this chart, so I'll, I'll go through this a little bit slowly. This comes out of the, one of the national labs in the U.S. So we're looking just at U.S. energy use. So uh, 97 quads, quad is a quadrillion BTU. So if I go back for a second, uh, total world consumption, if we start adding up some of these numbers, like 150, 250, 300, something like three or 400 quads, so it looks like the U.S. is using close to, I don't know, 25% of the world's energy. Um, you can probably find a more precise number than that, but ballpark, that's where we are. So on this side, we have all the different sources. Uh, it's broken down a little bit more specifically than the last slide because they've separated out some of the renewables. Now we have solar, hydro, wind, geothermal are separated. And then over on this side, we have the, the major sectors, so residential use of energy, commercial use of energy, 
industrial, so this is going to be uh, largely responsible to chemical production in, in this set right here, and then transportation. And then the last thing they've added here, which is, uh, was kind of a surprise to me the first time I saw this, is how much energy actually gets used as opposed to what gets wasted. So uh, roughly uh, uh, 50 to 60 percent of all the energy that's produced is not used productively. It just goes to uh, waste heat. So our, our infrastructure is actually very inefficient. So even if some of these industries are, are doing well with their, their efficiencies, uh, the actual production itself is not. So we, that bears out in what Professor Nassis was just saying, that the industrial complex is using the vast majority of the energy that comes in, so their waste bar is, is fairly low. But if you look at something like electricity generation, uh, by far the vast majority of that's going to waste. And so this has to do with the technology that's installed at power plants right now. So um, waste heat is probably the biggest thing that nuclear reactors, all these different reactors, they are uh, generating heat in addition to the electricity. So all that energy is going to be uh, rejected. Uh, we talked a lot about energy. This is another really dense graph. McKinsey is very good at doing, putting a lot of information on one slide. So I'll also try and walk through this. Um, here, I, I first want to, I'll start with the axes. So this, they're, they're trying to calculate what sort of uh, known energy efficient technologies could be put into practice today to achieve some uh, efficiency gains. And so if you add up all these different ideas that they have for saving electricity or saving energy, then the total uh, value of that energy would be 9,500 uh, trillion BTUs, so that's 9.5 quadrillions, nine and a half quads. Energy use, 97 quads. So in the US. In the US alone. So McKinsey has identified ideas for about 10% of our energy usage. So this is kind of the low hanging fruit. So you know, it's great that there's a lot of efficient technology out there. And there are some things that people have ideas about to, um, to put, it, put in practice to, to save a little bit more. But we still got this other 90% of the pie that needs a lot of work. So besides the efficiencies, there's just the, the magnitude of the whole thing. There's a lot of energy being used. And uh, you know, efficiency is going to get you a little bit of the way. But we have to go back and start thinking about some of these uh, intrinsic processes that are leading to the, to the overall big piece of the pie. So I think the last point I wanted to make here, uh, it took me a couple minutes to find these in, in the nest of information here. Chemical processes is right here. That's this little sliver right there. So McKinsey has identified this little sliver, sliver as being kind of low-hanging fruit for improving uh, chemical processes. There were a couple others that were really related to chemistry. So cement production, definitely chemistry in there. And then uh, pulp and paper processes gets a little bit of a bar there. So uh, those are kind of the major chemistry-centered uh, processes that are in this overall energy curve. So that's really kind of a drop in the bucket compared to the actual energy use. So um, that means there's a lot of work that needs to be done to go further, because this, this little bit of low-hanging fruit is not going to get us far in terms of the overall energy impact.